Joining me now, Ned Ryan, founder and CEO of American Majority, and Molly Hemingway, Federalist Editor-in-Chief, Fox News contributor. Uh, we've got some other domestic news we're going to get to. But, Ned, Biden said moments ago that Israel is making its own decisions. But we know that's not true, don't we? Uh, th there's a reason that the, the ground invasion of, of Gaza hasn't taken place, and I'm afraid it's, it's Biden and Blinken uh, exerting pressure uh, on Netanyahu to, to hold off on that. Uh, but I think the other thing, too, that we're seeing play out is the incredible weakness. You, you called them amateurs. They are incredibly weak amateurs. Uh, Biden is weakness personified, but it's his weakness that has brought us to this place. And his weakness in dealing with Iran, his appeasing of the mullahs, his giving them money, even more so lifting those sanctions to give them tens of billions of dollars more in oil revenue to fund Hamas, to fund Hezbollah. And I, I think the other thing, too, that's become pretty apparent to me, Laura, in watching this, this weakness play out in this specific situation and then watching those abhorrent comments from the White House yesterday about anti-Semitism, I think they're in a really difficult place politically here at home because the rabid left, which is the Democratic base, is very anti-Semitic, is very pro-Palestinian. And if they go too hard on this issue, you have the 2024 elections coming up and if they alienate that rabid left, they're going to go to Cornell West. You lose three or four points in the battleground states, you've lost the White House. So I think their weakness has put them in a very awkward place internationally, but it's also put them in a very awkward place politically here mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah, we're going to get into a little bit of that later on with Ed Rollins on the third party challenges. But Molly, John Kirby um, was out today and he was asked to grade Biden's presidency thus far. Tough question. Watch. If you want to give him a, a you know, report card, A+. Plus. Being president of the United States means balancing an awful lot of priorities and challenges, whether they're domestic or foreign. And the president is managing it really, really well because of his long experience in government, the wisdom he brings to the job, the relationships that he has. He's on, on top of it all. Molly, literally no one on the face of the planet believes that. No one. Yeah, I don't know if there's anyone in the Biden administration I've lost more respect for than John Kirby, uh, who is saying things that are absurd on their face right there. Joe Biden was very clear that he opposed every single aspect of President Trump's domestic and foreign policy. He ran on that. And we are now seeing what the fruits of that opposition is. With President Trump, you saw in the Middle East expanding peace with historic, you know, the move of the embassy to Jerusalem, with the signing of the Abraham Accords, with things like when Qasem Soleimani was attacking our troops, we took him out. That kind of strength that, you know, so it was not a fear about being strong, but you saw expanding peace in that region. With Biden, the Middle East is on fire. We have all of these hostages. We have a horrific situation breaking out that Americans were, are going to have to be paying for. And it really is, you know, just a reminder that when he said he opposed that foreign policy and he was elected, we are really suffering from that. And Ned, meanwhile, in this House Speaker's race, which, you know, it's all interrelated, but this House Speaker's race, which is still going on, uh, Trump came out against Tom Emmer from Minnesota. That killed his chances of, of being the next choice. And he basically wrote on Truth Social Day, the Republican Party can't take that chance because that's not where the right. America First voters are. Voting for a globalist rhino would, like Tom Emmer, would be a tragic mistake. And lo and behold, Emmer was out within, a, seems like a matter of minutes. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, well, Emmer, it, it's hard to believe that Emmer was even nominated to be potential speaker. Uh, he's, he's a puke rhino who was pushing the national popular vote, which was funded by Soros. The fact, it's appalling that he was even considered for speaker. But, you know, Tom Emmer was never going to be speaker. Kevin McCarthy's not going to be speaker, by the way. Gates has five votes. Uh, too bad that, that Jordan couldn't persuade some of those big spending Mm -hmm. uh, Republicans who want to see the Ukraine gravy train continue. <laughs> and now you hear rumors that somehow they might strike, someone might strike a deal with Democrats. If you do that, you are definitely a Benedict Arnold. You're done. But, but here's the point. But, but the problem war is this. Some of the infighting that took place in regards to who was going to be supported in the 2022 midterms and who was going to get funding and who was not going to get funding led to Republicans only having a four-seat majority instead of a 20-seat majority. And now you're seeing something play out where you've got swamp creatures, America first, it's and more establishment I mean, types fighting each other. I yeah. don't see a path forward, but I will say this one last thing. Real quick. There are a lot of people out in the greater world who say to themselves, if there's no speakers, that means we're not going to get any more spending that will sell us out. 
we're totally fine with that in the short term. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Molly, we're, we're just learning uh, moments ago that there, there may be a, a deal proposed where it would be a co-speakership with Jordan and McCarthy. Molly, hmm. is this more trial balloons that are going to go nowhere, or is that an interesting idea? Well, Real quick. Yeah, no, it seems like we are having the conference coming to terms with how bad the situation is. And I wonder if, as as no one is able, as the number of votes keep on getting lower and lower, whether people might try some kind of strategy like that. Those are two people who are broadly liked by the conference, and it might satisfy different wings. Who knows? If all the Republicans Maybe. stick together, they can get this done. But right now, it's not done yet. Panel, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.